Good afternoon. I'm Mark Peters, and this is DevSecOps for the DoD. Over the past year, I've had the pleasure of working with two different defense systems, two different Air Force cyber systems for the DoD, and watching them try to implement uh, DevSecOps and Agile. Like another talk earlier today, I'll have to uh, disguise those for anonymity so I don't give away the direct program. Uh, as we'll see on the next slide, so, I'm gonna, so we'll call one Kirk, which is an enabling cyber weapon system, and the other Spock is an offensive cyber weapon system. Mark. Uh, I saw both of these. I'm sorry. Uh, they were both moving to Agile, they're both moving to Safe. Uh, I had organizational visibility in both, and they both work for the same headquarters. So we have to see what DevSecOps, whether it works for the large organizations. Obviously it does, but does it work for that largest federal organization, the DOD, with over 4 million employees, and what do they want to get out of it? Well, they have certain gains, and they have planned implementation along the way that they need to get to, but they have to get through their problems. And their needs center around some central acquisition problems. They need money. They have too much uh, unrestricted control of the money, they don't have enough oversight. They don't have the right admin structures, and they have too many of those admin structures along the way, and endless waterfall practice practices to get to where they need. So you see with money, they spend too much with too little oversight. They spend about $600 billion a year, a third of that in acquisitions, and $10 billion on cyber. They have this thing called non McCurdy. If they go over 50% of their budget or 20% of their current budget, they have to go back to Congress and report. And that's not a good thing for anybody. But that resolves on the structure. The 1970s problems persist. With Pentagon Wars, the book or the movie, if you've seen those, those are both still there. Rapid prototyping was approved in 2012, and at that same time, DOD transferred direct control from the services or from them over to the services. And they run this waterfall process, this endless waterfall with simplified top-level workflows. <laughs> Each of these items is months or years of effort favoring documentation over function. So Agile has less documentation, so if they get to Agile and they get to DevSecOps, they figure that gets fixed. So they need to decrease those Agile costs first to get to goal number one. One in six of their IT projects has a 200% cost overrun, which brings it back to non -recurity. They figure if they can fix this, they can spend more of the money that they spend on cyber on real weapons like tanks, planes, and other things. Uh, the Air Force CSO says they can do it faster. So they're going to streamline the structure. Less structure, less admin means more delivery. The rapid prototype fielding time is five years to get that out. The Air Force CSO says bugs and fixes inside of a week. We can do this. We only need someone to sell us the experts along the way, uh, and we can get there. And that will help us damn the waterfall as our third goal. We end the waterfall, we speed our delivery, and we increase the satisfaction. The Government Accounting Office said uh, acquisition is bad. In 2015, they said, here are some best practices. In 2019, they said, none of those best practices have been employed yet. Get the users involved, which brings us back to Kirk and Spock. With Kirk, I did product manager and product owner for development teams, watching them undergo the transition. In Spock, I work as a security lead, seeing how they undergo the transition. And they both had a little bit different experiences along the way. With Kirk, what we saw first is four separate program objectives. They need to integrate, build, use, and distribute their pipelines uh, to get it working. But they don't have any consistent end user. They don't know who's using it. And those scrum objectives wind up being defined by headquarters. Headquarters drives the tooling down to the team level to tell them exactly what they need to do. And they turn and turn and turn, which their coaches told them in Agile, pivoting is good. And pivoting is great if you're ice skating and you get a great score, but not so great if you're mowing the lawn and you need to hit every long blade of grass along the way. And with those contractors, it meant high turnover. One of their teams had almost a 90% turnover. Only one of their devs was less six months later. Spock's got needs too, but they launched a full operational capability in 2016 as an off-net security tap system. So it's already out there. But they implemented as three separate contracts that didn't talk to each other. One for development, one for sustainment, one for support. They integrated that, but they're getting the in Agile I trust. Headquarters said, hey, it worked for somebody. You guys should do it too. Higher headquarters dictates. Then every level all along the way of that chart gets involved. And they wind up with small A Agile rather than the big A Agile or the integrated DevSecOps along the way. So you may also have heard about Kessel Run as a success. They deployed in 124 days when the DOD average was eight years. Huge success. Section 31 out of the Space and Missile Center, also a success. I don't have any personal experience with either of those teams, but that Accelerate 2019 report says one to six months of deployment is a low-performing team. So how do they get to the right tools at the right cost? Buy, rent, buy, build, or build. DOD wants to buy them, they want to build them, but they don't want to spend the money, and they don't want to implement the software solutions. They just want to have it done cheaper and faster right now. You have to fix the culture to get to the DevSecOps. It's a slow process. You have to limit those changes just like you would for software with small incremental steps. You have to streamline that structure and you have to make it happen. But those large organizations don't like distributed trust. Autonomy improves delivery, users improve fidelity, and requirements improve the solutions. Overall, they need to adopt those new processes because Agile and DevSecOps is tough. It's tough in big organizations and still tougher in the biggest organizations like an IBM or Google. Agile says move faster, but it says take one problem at a time, limit that whip, and don't try to do everything all at the same time. Uh, what I think the solution is, in my opinion, they need more sibbers. They need the right experts at the right time, at the right place, to help them adopt the new culture and make those solutions. So can the DOD succeed with DevSecOps? 
think it's to be continued. <laughs>